Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Well, I guess I'll pose a question to you. Uh, I think I know the answer, but I want your opinion. What do you think is the number one problem within the church? Now, I suspect that many people are going to say that um, the false gospel, the lordship salvation, works uh, salvation, um, but that's not in the church because people who are teaching that and believe that way, they're not in the church. That's it's a false gospel, and uh, if they if they believe that they're saved because of not just what Jesus has done for them, but all the religious works that they've done to make themselves acceptable to God, then they're they're really not in the church. So the question is, really, what's the biggest problem in the church among the people who truly believe that they're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone? I believe the number one problem is dogmatism supported by egomania. In other words, dogmatism just means that uh, you're, you're taking your point of view to an extreme and uh, not allowing for any other point of view to be considered. And um, I am a dogmatist when it comes to the deity of Christ, salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and eternal security. These are the three core doctrines of Christianity. And uh, I will be absolutely dogmatic. I will teach and defend those doctrines and without any compromise. But all the other theological subject matter, uh, apart from those uh, doctrines, um, no matter how much we might think a, a particular subject is important or interesting, they do not rise to the level of importance as these core doctrines, these essentials. So if it is a subject that is non-essential, uh, and then you are really making it an essential, saying that uh, you are dogmatic about Bible translation, for example. You will not allow any other point of view. You won't associate with someone who disagrees with you on Bible translation. Uh, I'm talking about which version of the Bible translation you want to use. Uh, if you think that uh, your conclusion about eschatology, you know, how the end times of history are going to play out regarding the uh, rapture, resurrection, uh, millennium, uh, tribulation, all these things, if you have an opinion on that and you will not allow for other opinions that uh, you're dogmatic on that, then you're elevating a non-essential you're elevating it to an essential. Um, and the problem with, with that kind of dogmatism is it is rooted in egomania. That, that means that you, you really think you're that smart, that knowledgeable, that infallible, that your position is the correct position. And that's that, period. <laughs> I have some uh, doctrinal positions uh, on non-essentials that I feel very convinced and I feel strongly that I'm, I'm, I'm correct. Um, and then other non-essential subjects, I maybe uh, I may be pretty confident, but I'm not all that confident. Then there's other subjects where I'm just not confident at all. And uh, I may have an opinion, but I, I just, I'm not sure at all that I'm right. 
I also realize that uh, in the last 31 years, the doctrines that I've uh, formed and accepted, uh, there's been a few times where uh, I was proven wrong and I changed my mind and switched to, let's say that there's two opposing viewpoints, two different camps. I was in one camp, for example, um, dispensational futurism that you would learn from uh, Dr. Peter Ruckman, Clarence Larkin, the Left Behind series, Darby, Schofield, all of that line of thinking about eschatology, that's the position I held. And then, after further study, listening to the other points of view, my uh, position has switched away and I'm no longer in that camp. I, I have a different point of view. Uh, but uh, there have been times where uh, I I feel I was proven wrong, and I would not be a stubborn fool and just hold on to my error once uh, it was exposed. Uh, if you you can prove me wrong about something, I will happily change my mind because I want to be right. But this dogmatism problem in the church, the, really the root problem is, I think it's psychological. Um, the, a, 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 a particular kind of a person uh, that believes that all of the theological positions that they hold are correct, that they could not possibly be wrong, and that if you disagree with them, then you're obviously wrong, and uh, in some cases, you believe that that particular subject matter is essential. Whether it's uh, uh, your opinion about hell or your opinion about end times or your opinion about uh, Bible translations or a hundred other things, you're convinced that your position's right and you, you won't allow any disagreement on it. If people disagree, then you, uh, you know, you'll attack them. People, you'll try to expose them as false teachers and heretics. And whew, I'm very, very concerned about them because of, because of this. Well, you shouldn't be so concerned because it's okay for us to be wrong on non-essentials. Uh, there are some non-essential questions where I'm really convinced that I'm right and you're wrong. But am I making videos about you saying, well, your particular position on this is uh, wrong and uh, I need to expose it? No, I just accept the fact that you don't agree with me. I, I've studied your point of view. I've studied this other point of view. And my conclusion was this, this point of view is correct. But in your case, uh, those people who are making these uh, exposing videos, they're Most of them, I think, are, they're not even willing to even study the opposing point of view. And if, uh, if you were willing to study it, and then you still felt that your original position is correct, that's fine. At least you're speaking from experience and knowledge instead of out, speaking out of ignorance. At least, at least you know both sides of the argument. Uh, but, as I said, uh, all other subject matter besides these core doctrines are non-essential. And when you get dogmatic on non-essentials, you're elevating it and saying, no, there are more essential doctrines than the deity of Christ, salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, and eternal security. You're, going, you're telling us that there are additional theological subjects that are essential that we better agree with you. You will not allow other opinions to be expressed. That's what you're saying. So uh, it's pretty sad in my opinion that uh, um, there's this uh, you know constant bickering 
finger pointing and name calling. And it's just, uh, of course, the Bible tells us about these problems. These, these problems are ancient, maybe, and, and uh, I will probably always have these problems. Uh, as long as we have this old nature in us, well, then our egos are going to interfere with our, our thought process. And uh, I think that if you're someone that is elevating non-essentials to a level of importance where you're dogmatic and saying that this also now is an, an essential, in my opinion, whether it's the subject of hell, that's not an essential. Uh, wh whether it's your, your bi preferred Bible translation, that's not an essential. Uh, the, the rapture, the millennium, the tribulation, those things are not essentials. But if you are requiring people to agree with you on that, otherwise you will label them as a heretic and false teacher, uh, then you are a dogmatist of, of, of the worst kind. All right, so that's what I think is the number one problem within the church. Um, if you think there's something else that's a bigger problem, I'd like to hear about it, but give me your thoughts on this. And if you have any ideas on, on how to uh, fix it, um, on my uh, channel, I've adopted the creed uh, now for several years. I've been posting this uh, on every video description. Uh, and it says, um, in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, charity. That's a creed that I've adopted a few years ago. And uh, I've recently met uh, some other brothers and sisters that uh, have also embraced that creed. And that's the only way that we're going to really have fellowship be able to get along. Because uh, we should be able to talk about any theological subject without anybody getting all antsy and nervous and irritated just because someone has a different opinion than you do on a non-essential. Okay? All right. Thank you for watching. Look forward to your comments. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.